Hello students, how are you? I hope you all are fine and enjoying your studies. So student, today we will start our new chapter from class 8 civics book chapter number 6. Chapter's name, Understanding our Criminal Justice System. Student, in this chapter, I will tell you a story. In this story, you know about the role of the police, the defense lawyer and the public prosecutor and the role of judge. After that, I will tell you very important article 22 and article 39A. So student, let's start our story. Let's start. Students, when we see someone violating the law, we immediately think of informing the police. You might have seen either in real life or in the movies, police officer filling reports and arresting person because of the role played by the police in arresting person, we often get confused and think that it is the police who decide whether a person is guilty or not. This, however, is far from true. After a person is arrested, it is a court of law that decides whether the accused person is guilty or not. According to the constitution, Every individual charged of a crime has to be given a fair trial. So student, I will tell you story. Please listen carefully. In the story, the date is 18th July 2006. Mr. and Mrs. Shinde are getting ready for a party. So when Mrs. Shinde is trying to decorate herself with her jewelry, she finds one of her chain is missing from her draw. She searching her gold chain for over an hour. Mr. Shinde comes and says, We already late, but Mrs. Shinde convey her message that she couldn't find her gold chain. She suspect that Shanti, her maid, stolen it. Mrs. Shinde blames Shanti. Mrs. Shinde says, Shanti, now you start to stealing thing? My gold chain is missing. I want to search it and we have called the police. Shanti says, I have not stolen it ma'am. Mr. Shinde searches Shanti's trunk and find an envelope with rupees 10,000 in it. He screams at Shanti. Shanti says, Saab, my brother and I have been saving this money to buy a bull. When we go to our village, I am innocent sir, but Mr. Shinde didn't listen. He go to the police station and file an FIR against Shanti. Sub-inspector Mr. Rao records FIR and Mr. Shinde return with Sub-inspector Rao. He arrest Shanti and take her to the police station. On 19th July 2006, one month later, Shanti's brother Sushil arrives and pleads with Sub-inspector Rao to release Shanti. Sub-Inspector Rao says that you can go to the court and get a bail order. Students, now I will tell you about bail order. The temporary release of an accused person awaiting trial sometime on condition that a sum of money is lodged to guarantee their appearance in court. That is bail order. Sub-Inspector Rao forcibly keeps Sushil in the police station for two days. He is abused and beat by Sub-Inspector Rao and they try and make him confess that he and his sister Shanti had a gang of domestic servants that have stolen jewelry from others' home. After one month, 23rd August 2006, the court grant bail to Shanti but she is unable to get anyone to stand surety for her for rupees 20,000. So, therefore, she continue to be in jail. On 14th September 2006, the police files a charge sheet in the magistrate's court. The court gives a copy of charge sheet to Shanti. Advocate Kamla Roy meet Shanti in the court. Shanti says, here are my case paper, ma'am. I have been falsely accused of stealing my employer's gold chain. Sushil, Shanti's brother, says, 
they found rupees 10000 in shanti's trunk and said that this was the money she got from stealing the chain but this is the money that we have been saving up together on 11th december 2006 the court frames a charge of theft of mrs shinde's gold chain and possession of money rupees 10000 got from selling stolen property against shanti shanti says i plead not guilty and the trial before the magistrate begins on 8th march 2007 the public prosecutor appears in the case on behalf of the state he presents mrs and mr shinde as a key witness public prosecutor says tell me mrs shinde how did the gold chain go missing mrs shinde says i had kept my chain in the drawer shanti stole it no other outsider except shanti goes into my room mr shinde searched her trunk in front of me and we were shocked to find rupees 10000 in an envelope shanti got this money from selling my gold chain she is a thief next advocate roy cross examines the prosecution witness mrs shinde mrs kamla roy says so what you are basically saying is that you did not see shanti steal the chain nor did you recover the chain on shanti also in the three years that she has worked for you nothing has been stolen from the house you were also regularly paying her rupees thousand as salary each month on 20th april 2007 advocate roy examines sushil and his employer as defense witnesses through this testimonies she is able to show that the rupees 10000 found on shanti's trunk could well be the earning of sushil and shanti on 14th may 2007 as the trial is nearing completion sushil learns that inspector sharma has busted a gang of young men who have been stealing jewelry from the shinde's neighborhood some of mrs shinde's son's friend are part of this gang mrs shinde chan has been found on them sushil tell advocate roy about this advocate roy now calls inspector sharma as a defense witness inspector sharma kamla roy says inspector sharma can you show and tell us what you have found inspector sharma says here is the chain ma'am that has been identified by mrs shinde as hers we busted a gang of boys who had stolen the chain these boys have admitted that they stole the chain on 15th july 2007 the judge hears the testimony of all the witnesses after the testimony of inspector sharma advocate roy argues before the judge that it has now been established that shanti is innocent and should be acquitted judge says shanti you are hereby acquitted of the charge of theft the police will hand over to you the rupees 10000 that they had sealed in my written judgment i have made it a point to highlight sub inspector rao's role in conducting such a shoddy investigation that's made you spend time in jail so student from the above incident you can see that the four key players in the criminal justice system are the police the public prosecutor the defense lawyer and the judge you have seen the roles each of them played in the above case now let us try and understand their role more generally so student now i will tell you the role of the police in investigating a crime one important function of the police is to investigate any complaint about the commission of a crime an investigation includes recording statement of witnesses and collecting different kind of evidence on the basis of the investigation the police are required to form an opinion if the police think that the 
evidence points to be guilt of the accused person, then they file a charge sheet in the court. It is not the job of the police to decide whether a person is guilty or innocent. That is for the judge to decide. Police investigation always have to be conducted in accordance with law and with full respect for human rights. The Supreme Court has laid down guidelines that the police must follow at the time of arrest, detention and interrogation. The police are not allowed to torture or beat or shoot anyone during investigation. They cannot inflict any form of punishment on a person even for pity offences. Student, I will tell you Article 22. Listen carefully. Article 22 of the Constitution and Criminal Law guarantee to every arrested person the following fundamental rights. Number 1. The right to be informed at the time of arrest of the offence for which the person is being arrested. Number 2. The right to be presented before a magistrate within 24 hours of arrest. Number 3. The right not to be ill-treated or tortured during arrest or in custody. Number 4. Confessions made in police custody cannot be used as evidence against the accused. Number 5. A boy under 15 years of age and woman cannot be called to the police station only for cautioning. So student, this is the article 22. Now I will tell you about DK Basu guidelines. DK Basu guidelines includes the police official who carry out the arrest or interrogation should wear clear accurate and visible identification and name tags with their designations. Second, a memo of arrest should be prepared at the time of arrest and should include the time and date of arrest. It should be attested by at least one witness who could include a family member of the person arrested. The arrest memo should be countersigned by the person arrested. Third, the person arrested, detained or being interrogated has a right to inform a relative, friend or well-wisher. Number four, when a friend or relative leaves outside the district, the time, place of arrest and venue of custody must be notified by police within 8 to 12 hours after arrest. So student, Article 22 and DK Basu guidelines is very important for arrested person. Student, I will tell you about FIR. FIR stands for First Information Report. It is with the registration of an FIR that the police can begin their investigations into a crime. The law states that it is compulsory for an officer in charge of a police station to register an FIR whenever a person gives information about a conigable offence. This information can be given to the police either orally or in writing. The identity of the accused person and witness is also mentioned in FIR. The FIR usually mentions the date, time and place of the offence, detail the basic facts of the offence including a description of the events. The identity of the accused person and witnesses is also mentioned. There is a prescribed form in which the police registers an FIR and it is signed by the complainants. The complainants also has a legal right to get a free copy of the FIR from the police. So student, now I will tell you the role of the public prosecutor. A criminal offence is regarded as a public wrong. Therefore, the case against the accused is presented by the state. In court, it is the public prosecutor who represents the interest of the state. The prosecutor must conduct the prosecution on behalf of the state. As an officer of the court, 
it is his her duty to act impartially and present the full and material facts witnesses and evidence before the court to enable the court to decide the case students now i will tell you the role of the judge the judge is like an umpire in a game and conducts the trial impartially and in an open court the judge hears all the witnesses and any other evidence presented by the prosecution and the defense the judge decides whether the accused person is guilty or innocent on the basis of the evidence presented and in accordance with the law if the accused is convicted then the judge pronounces the sentence he may send the person to jail or impose a fine or both depending on what the law prescribes so student now i will tell you very important thing that is fair trial what is fair trial a trial can be called fair when several different procedures are observed because the article 21 of the constitution which guarantees the right to life states that a person's life or liberty can be taken away only by following a reasonable and just legal procedure a fair trial must ensure that article 21 of the constitution is upheld student now i will tell you fair trial procedures number 1 accused should be given a copy of the charge sheet and other evidence against him or her number 2 trial should be held in an open court in the presence of the accused and his her friends number 3 accused should be defended by a lawyer number 4 defense lawyer should be given opportunity to cross examine the prosecution witnesses and to present witnesses in the defense of the accused number 5 the prosecution must prove beyond reasonable doubt the guilt of the accused person till such time the accused must be deemed as innocent number 6 the judge must decide the matter impartially on the basis of the evidence presented in the court so student the constitution and the law both state that all of the persons that we have discussed in this chapter should carry out their roles in a proper manner what this means is that they all need to work to ensure that every citizen irrespective of their class caste gender religious and ideological backgrounds gets a fair trial when accused the rule of law which says that everyone is equal before the law would not make much sense if every citizen were not guaranteed a fair trial by the constitution so student now i will tell you article 22 and article 39 a according to article 22 of the constitution every person has a fundamental right to be defended by a lawyer and article 39 a of the constitution places a duty upon the state to provide a lawyer to any citizen who is unable to engage one due to poverty or other disability so article 39a gives shanti a opportunity to hire a lawyer so student now start our question answers question number 1 who are the key players in the criminal justice system answer police defense lawyer public prosecutor judge question number 2 write the full form of fir and who record it full form of fir is first information report the power and responsibility to record an fir rests with the police next question who decides whether the arrested person is guilty or not answer court of law decides whether the arrested person is guilty or not next question in the court who represents the case on behalf of the state answer a public prosecutor conducts the prosecutions on behalf of the state next question 
if a person is arrested as accused then who grants him bail answer the court grants bail to the accused person next question if a person is unable to appoint a lawyer due to poverty then who provides for a lawyer answer under article 39a of the indian constitution the state is responsible for providing a lawyer to every citizen who is unable to appoint the same due to poverty next question which article of the indian constitution gives every person a fundamental rights to be defended by a lawyer answer is every person has a fundamental right to be defended by a lawyer under article 22 of the indian constitution next question what are the main functions of the police answer number 1 to maintain law and order in its area to prevent the crimes in its area number 2 to register case of theft rape murder accident etc number 3 to investigate and take action on the case within its own area now i will ask some mcq question number 1 a person who is tried by a court for a crime is called options are innocent accused criminal witness answer is accused next question judge decides the case only on the basis of options are evidence money favor force answer is evidence next question who decide whether the accused is innocent or guilty options are judge lawyer police official public prosecutor answer is judge next question who registers a fir options are police judge patwari sarpanch answer is police next question fir means options are first information review firstly informed right first information report and all of these answer is first information report now i will ask fill in the blanks number 1 a criminal offence is regarded as a dash wrong number 2 the complaint has a legal right to get a free copy of the dash number 3 police investigations always have to be conducted in accordance with dash number 4 dash of the constitution guarantees to every arrested person some fundamental rights next question dash has to investigate any complaint about the commission of a crime so student now we fill these blanks answer 1 public second fir third law fourth article 22 fifth police so student i hope you understand this story and all the concept about role of the police the public prosecutor and judge so students we will meet again in part 2 till then bye bye namaskar